Hi, everybody. This is The Takeaway, and I'd like to welcome Alex Newman to join us again. Alex is the author of The Takeaway, and we have this weekly conversation about what's going on primarily. It seems more and more about how school officials are overstepping their bounds. Tell us about the latest outrage in George Mason High School in Falls uh, Falls Church, Virginia, Alex. Uh, well, thanks very much, Duke. Pleasure to be with you. And uh, so what happened here, as it's been related by uh, various organizations and uh, media accounts, and we also have a video of the speech, uh, school officials in Falls Church, Virginia, at the George Mason High School forced high school students uh, to sit through an entire assembly where they were lectured for half an hour by a propagandist for the Washington Post and a transgender advocate who had just recently uh, released a book about, uh, it's called Becoming Nicole. And so basically this was uh, 30 minutes worth of glorification of uh, genital mutilation under the guise of a sex change surgery, as if one could change their sex merely by mutilating their genitals, uh, and also uh, bullying against uh, children who resist this agenda, uh, indicating that there's something wrong with them if they don't agree and telling the kids to get used to it because uh, gender is now a spectrum and uh, the people who assigned you your sex at birth might have been wrong. Yeah, I love this. This bully they brought in, this Amy Ellis Nutt, who is, like as you mentioned, she's a transgender, she is uh, an author, she's kind of a polemicist, and she's a bully. Uh, to sit there in front of a group of kids who have no choice but to be there, whose parents haven't been notified, these kids who have no ability to opt out during school time, when these kids could be better served learning to read a little bit better or do math a little bit better, the scores are horrible. Uh, instead, they're forced to sit here and listen to this bully who basically said to them, get used to it. Uh, change your worldview, forget your beliefs, forget what your parents say, forget what your religion says, get used to it. Uh, We will determine how you see gender. We will determine what language you you use. We will determine what pronouns you are allowed to speak. Get over it, right? And what kind of reaction was there from the parents in the school? Well, uh, from what we know, uh, pretty much everybody with uh, two brain cells to rub together was pretty outraged. And, you know, this wasn't like they had a debate between, uh, you know, a transgender advocate of gender confusion and general mutilation on one side. And then, you know, somebody on the other side saying, well, wait a minute, kids here, you know, you probably don't want to chop off your private parts and uh, take uh, puberty suppressing hormones and, uh, you know, do irreversible damage to your body, potentially lifetime infertility. Um, You know, none of that. So we only had one perspective here. And uh, this uh, Amy Nutt from the Washington Post uh, actually told the students about, uh, it was like a big promotion for her book too, this book called uh, Becoming Nicole. It's about a, a little boy who apparently was very confused and uh, believed himself to be to have been born in the wrong body. And so uh, prior to reaching puberty, he began taking uh, puberty suppressing hormones so that his body would not develop as it normally would. And then at the age of 17, he was castrated. And uh, this Amy Nutt was apparently there for the castration and was celebrating how wonderful it was that uh, this young boy had decided to uh, to be castrated. Uh, you know, and he, it's not even that he was an adult. He was still underage when this happened. And, uh, and so there's a whole book glorifying this. And this is what the poor kids were subjected to. But based on some of the questions, it seems like there are at least still some students with some common sense left. And uh, one of them asked, uh, you know, aren't you just glorifying a a mental health issue here? And, you know, we could quibble about whether this is really a mental health issue or a spiritual health issue. But, uh, you know, clearly at least not all of the children were uh, were suckered in by this narrative. Well, that just seems utterly appropriate that uh, Amy Ellis Nutt was present uh, in person for an emasculation. That seems to be mostly what this is about, right? And uh, the thing that bothers me most, uh, Alex, about all of this, you've got high school kids now being held captive and lectured. Not a, like you said, it's not a debate. There's not two sides of the story. We're not bringing in speakers to balance out the roster. High school kids being lectured uh, about what gender is and how they are basically heterophobic uh, or heteronormative if they don't agree with this new agenda. You've got white kids all across the country in schools from elementary school through university and now having to sit still and listen to how their white privilege uh, makes them complicit with race no matter what they think and say. You've got men, male students all over, again, from middle school all the way through high school sitting through courses where there is no debate, there is no counter proposal, there is no argument, there is simply people telling you that simply by by virtue of being male, you are a predator, you are toxic. And this is what education has become. It's bullying, it's one-sidedness, it's lecturing, it's hectoring. Uh, Teachers, administrators, the people behind this don't feel the need to even present information anymore as if there might be more than one way to look at it, only the progressive way.
That's exactly right. And uh, and that's what the kids are being presented with. They're being told that this is truth. You know, to the extent that there is truth, it is what the schools tell you, which is you can be any gender you want, regardless of your chromosomes. And uh, we're in a very dangerous place now. This, this is serious abuse of children. Uh, the American College of Pediatricians has it exactly right. When they call this institutionalized child abuse, they're right. I mean, you're you're brainwashing children to believe that if they cut off their private parts, they're somehow going to be a new gender. I mean, you know, just even a few years ago, that would have been so ludicrous. The fact that this is going on now uh, really tells you how fast we're sliding down into the abyss. Well, and you hit on one of the key hypocrisies that drives people crazy. This is the academic left. This is the educational left in this country. Uh, and they're the first ones to tell you that things like mathematics are logocentric holdovers from white male culture, that truth and logic are things that have have to be done away with because they're white supremacist. Uh, that uh, the idea that mer of meritocracies, the idea that we reward people for striving to be excellent, that's a holdover of white privilege. There is no truth unless you are one of 64 different genders between male and female, which has to be taken as absolutely true. This was this thing that absolutely staggers me, Alex, is that the concept of absolute male and female scientifically underwritten absolute male and female that we know biologically exists, we're told that's a construct, that's made up. But any one of dozens and dozens and dozens of made up genders, we have to act as if they're true on pain of censorship or punishment. It is completely backward. Uh, this is not education. These are, for lack of a better word, these are concentration-like boot camps. Uh, this is something that would have been worthy of the Hitler Jugend, right, back in Nazi Germany, where these kids were ripped away from their parents, their head was filled with illogical, uh, secular, materialist garbage, and they were made good, solid wards of the state. How is this any different than that? You know, the parallels are incredibly striking. Uh, and they're even exploiting the same human psychological vulnerabilities to advance their agenda. You know, uh, just like the, the Nazi regime and other totalitarian regimes have told people, if you question, you're a bad citizen. Uh, if you disagree, you're a bad citizen. You're an enemy of the people. You're, you know, whatever nasty remark. Uh, they're doing the same thing now to American children. If you disagree with the idea that there's 64 genders, if you stick to biological fact that there's two sets of chromosomes, male and female, then you are a hater, you're transphobic, you're a bigot, you're, you know, all these different things. So they're exploiting a psychological weakness that people have that they don't want to be labeled nasty terms. They want to fit in with the group and so on. Uh, and, and it's really nefarious. I, I think people need to realize, and I think if you watch some of the excerpts of this lady's speech, or, you know, lady, um, maybe that's not the right term, but of nuts uh, speech, uh, it comes through loud and clear. I mean, she sits there and calls people bullies who don't think, uh, you know, grown men and, and boys ought to be showering and using the same restroom with little girls. Uh, and yet there she is bullying any student who rejects this gender ideology that she's, she's preaching, uh, bullying in a way that, that beats them down, that makes them feel like they're less, that makes them feel like they're bad. Uh, it, it's scary how fast this is happening. Yeah, right. Young girls who question the wisdom and the safety of having adult men in the showers with them or in the bathrooms with them, they're the bullies. I can just see it now. 16-year-old soccer girl bullies 18-year-old uh, high school senior boy who used to be on the football team. It doesn't make any sense, Alex. And the other thing that blows me away is we, we already know uh, what, one of the major reasons the schools, the public schools have gone down this route is because God has been removed. The idea of God, the, the ability to talk about God and truth and, and creation, that's gone. But here's what blows me away too, is that now that God is out of the schools, what's left? What's left is nature. And obviously nature itself, scientifically verifiable nature is still not good enough for the liberal progressive. It's not good enough that nature has male and female. Uh, we, in our progressive wisdom folly, we can do better than nature by overriding nature and making up all these genders. And so it's not enough just to, per and this is what I really want to convey to American parents. You know, you, some of you are really comfortable with them having gotten rid of God from school, you know, separation of church and state and all that. But understand this, science, nature, logic, mathematics themselves are no longer considered valid because of their origins, because of the people who developed them, because of Western culture. If you think this is gonna stop with the elimination of religion, this is a complete rewriting of nature to fit a liberal premise. You're exactly right, Duke. And, and, you know, we can't emphasize this strongly enough that LGBT, the transgender stuff, this is just the tip of the spear for a much broader assault that's coming down the pike on everything that we have traditionally considered part of civilized, you know, Christian Western civilization. And, uh, you know, we know where this ends. I mean, look around. 
the world. Look at uh, the variety of civilizations that sprung up that were not, uh, you know, Judeo-Christian in their orientations and beliefs. And uh, what we see is barbarism and savagery and cannibalism and, and human sacrifice and, I mean, just stuff that is horrifying, even to a lot of these secular liberals who are, you know, on, on this uh, crusade to eliminate God. And the Bible is very clear. Uh, you know, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Uh, this is in Psalms. You know, this is something that, that's in the, the Jewish scriptures, the Christian scriptures, and it's a basic truth. When you eliminate that foundation, you're building this whole edifice of so-called knowledge on a on a foundation of quicksand. And, uh, and it ends up creating perversion and evil and wickedness and we see the fruit of that already i mean look at what is happening to our society it all traces back to exactly what you're talking about here duke yeah and it's going to get worse like you said alex Uh, alex newman the takeaway thank you for another uh, illuminating report we look forward to talking to you again next week if you enjoyed that video please consider following us online and also consider a tax deductible donation so we can continue to produce quality videos like the one you just watched i'm dr duke thanks for watching (laughs) 